Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. I hope that you're having a wonderful one. Uh, it's unfortunately a little smoky over here in Connecticut again. Um, it's going to be that way. I guess it was yesterday and today, too, but it's finally sunny out. It's been a little bit rainy over here, but I do have to say that the green has been so plush and it's been so vibrant around. So I guess we really have that to be thankful for. Plus that green, uh, that green color helps to really soothe and calm too. It's actually the color of life. So why not have more green around us and have more life, right? All right, so my talk today is titled Women's Health, Nutrition, and watermelon, oxalates, and athletic performance. So these all go hand in hand. Now I have been talking about my wonderful membership group, which I am so excited about. I'm finally, finally launching this thing. Um, as I was saying before, what it incorporates is it's a Facebook group. It is my recipes. You get the 10% uh, off of my dispensary uh, and you're entered into the challenge for July and one of the challenges for July is to incorporate July foods into your training and whoever contributes the most wins a prize at the end and one of those lovely foods for July are or I should say is watermelon I absolutely love this fruit and it is so beneficial for athletic performance I'll actually share a study as to how watermelon really improved uh, I believe it was cyclists that it was, yes, it was cyclists for the study and how it really improved recovery time and also gave them more energy too. But with that, I just want to introduce myself. Hello, my name is Drew Malvi. I'm a certified dietitian nutritionist. I am a board certified nutrition specialist. I am a certified leap therapist, which is a specific food sensitivity protocol based off of mediator release testing. It's about 92% accurate and specific for those particular food sensitivities. And it can immensely help with your athletic performance and if there's any other inflammatory issues that are going on in your body. I am a precision nutrition level one coach, which is more holistic sports nutrition. I am a certified personal trainer through the National Academy of Sports Medicine, and I do personal train here in Southbury. And I can say this now, I will be certified to be an integrative sports nutritionist in a couple of weeks, which is really integrating the whole mind, body, spirit approach with nutrition and exercise and really doing a whole lifestyle workup, to be honest, to really help you to get to the most, um, well, to really release your athletic potential so that you're not only it's your athletic potential, but it's also your quality of life and you transform through the process, which is so cool. I've utilized so many of these principles and it's amazing to see where I've come from, especially I know some of you have uh, uh, followed me on my journey, but it really is amazing how far that I have come. Uh, I work with overachieving athletic females to really transform their mindsets around food, find their identities, and really create foundations that are going to help them reach their athletic potential, not only athletic potential, but their life potential as well. All right, so today we're going to be talking about watermelon and oxalates, and what the heck are oxalates? I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But let's talk about watermelon. So watermelon, that's a common food that we see at picnics. It's commonly after races. Why is it that watermelon is so beneficial for us and how is it that it can actually help us to recover and improve? Well, first of all, watermelon, according to traditional Chinese medicine, is a red food and red food help foods help with the heart. That's what summer is associated with with the heart. So really building up that I wouldn't want to say, I don't want to say good energy, but building up your body so that you're eating seasonally and you're actually getting the most nutrients out of them. And it's helping your heart too. I love how traditional Chinese medicine does that. Plus there are so many other health benefits of watermelon. They're very high in potassium. I know that there are now watermelon drinks. So it's watermelon water instead of coconut water. And I have had that before. Um, it's very high in potassium. I'm trying to think it's about 412 milligrams of potassium, I want to say, in one of those um, one of those bottles. Uh, it's not too high in sodium, so you would have to add a little bit of salt in there just to balance the two. But potassium is very important for us because it helps to prevent muscle cramping, super important, and it heart, helps us to regulate our heart rhythm. Plus, potassium and magnesium are very alkalizing to the system, and when things are alkalizing, then First of all, 
your body's producing energy much more effectively and B, your body, your bones in particular are not trying to leach out the calcium to alkalize the environment and make your bones a little bit weaker. So very important that you're incorporating those alkalizing foods such as fruits and vegetables and there's some uh, nuts and seeds that are very alkalizing and lentils are too. Watermelon is also a really easy source of sugar. So I know that it can be a little bit higher on the glycemic index, but that's actually really good for those that are endurance athletes because it's quick fuel. So that's one thing that can be incorporated pre-workout, inter-workout, and post-workout. It's also very easy to digest. Uh, this is the recent study that I was looking up, which was really, really cool. So these cyclists were either given a watermelon puree or they were given, uh, okay, <laughs> Facebook decided not to, um, all right, well, that's okay. Uh, where was I going with that? Okay, so this recent study, sorry about that. These cyclists were given either a 6% carbohydrate solution. So what that is, it it's 60 grams of simple carbohydrates per one liter of water. And that's usually sipped throughout the, the hour to help to replenish the uh, glycogen that's being lost and the sugars that are being lost. And then the other group was given watermelon puree and what they was measured for was antioxidant status uh, for energy levels and also for recovery. So interestingly enough, there was an increased blood flow after workout, there was much better energy, plus they just performed better overall. Now there's the sugar component, which can really help because it's really quick sugar, but watermelon is also a really good source of L-arginine and L-citrulline, which citrulline and arginine actually go hand in hand because they help your body to produce nitric oxide. And that nitric oxide helps with de uh, dilating the blood vessels and increasing blood flow to your muscles and your organs so that you're gonna be recovering a lot better. If you think about it, you increase blood flow, that's carrying nutrients and that's carrying oxygen that your body needs to be able to function properly and to recover properly. So watermelon puree, you can even bring on your bike or when you're on the run and it's really super easy. Just you could get a little squeezy pack and just uh, make sure that the seeds don't get in there because that, that might be kind of interesting if you end up uh, swallowing one of those when you're running or cycling. Okay, so yes, word to the wise, please take the the uh, seeds out before you put it in any sort of a puree. Um, we talked about the potassium. We talked about all the vitamins and minerals. Well, the mineral in particular that I was focusing on was potassium, but it's also a low oxalate fruit. Now, why is this important and why does it affect the athletic performance? Well, oxalates are compounds in specific foods that if they're not metabolized properly in your body, it can create calcium, actually can bind calcium. It can create kidney stones. It can uh, lodge in your adrenals and cause fatigue. It can lodge in your joints and it can cause joint pain. It can also cause uh, well, lack of energy and also brain lethargy as well because they're not being metabolized. So usually what happens when oxalates aren't being metabolized properly, there's a few reasons for this. One, your gut. So if your gut bacteria is off in any sense, there's one in particular, oxalobacter. If that's not enough in your stomach, then you're not gonna be metabolizing these things properly and then they can increase in your body. Oxalates can also be uh, generated in your body naturally from vitamin C. So normally if your oxalates are high, it's not recommended to have vitamin C supplementation because that can actually aggravate the problem. I found what the problem. I found what the problem is on, <laughs> on Facebook. Speaking of problems. <sighs> All right. So oxalates. Yes. If you do have a problem with them, you can start to feel like you're so lethargic, really run down. You're not able to train properly and you can actually have pain in your bones. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very true. So why do we really have to worry about this in particular? Just gonna take that up. So if you are feeling any of these symptoms, joint pain, if you're feeling like you're really lethargic, if you're feeling like you're really just not performing your best, then I would recommend definitely get tested. I have an organic acids test that will test for that in particular. But more importantly, oxalates can also be a problem when A, yes, you're eating too many of them and they're not being metabolized. So they're very high in spinach, chocolate, beets, and some in potatoes and sweet potatoes as well. 
uh, to decrease some of those, but also to make sure that your gut bacteria is in alignment because when it's out of alignment, there is a specific species that if that is elevated, that's going to affect the metabolism of oxalates. And that's when they can start to go haywire and start to go into other places in your body. Now, I do have a personal testimony with this. I had this done, uh, this test done a year and a half ago. And if I found that the oxalates were high and I did this time, I didn't have SIBO. I know one of them, I did have a little bit of bacterial overgrowth. And so taking care of that and then taking the oxalates out, I felt so much energy. Why? Because I found that the oxalates were being lodged in my adrenals and that's what was just fatiguing me. So does that mean that you have to take oxalates out of your, your body? Well, if you have oxalates in your body, but does that mean that you have to take it out of your diet? Not necessarily. I would say that it is better to get tested than just to assume because you don't have to be on this forever. And eventually your body gets normalized, your gut can get normalized. Also, if you're not digesting fat properly, then that can also increase the oxalates too. So maybe including digestive enzymes and seeing where your gut is in general. That is what I recommend before trying to go full blown into this and thinking like, oh my gosh, this has to be a big lifestyle change. There's a process to it. So if you do suspect, again, I have the test, let's run it, let's meet, and let's get you performing your best. All right. With that in mind, I think this was a pretty short one today. So thank you so much for everybody coming today. Um, definitely incorporate watermelon at the next picnic. And it can be great for recovery. So because of the L-arginine and the L-citrulline that's in it, that can help to increase blood flow so that the nutrients are getting to your, your muscles and organs a lot faster. It's a very quick source of carbohydrates. So great for pre-workout, intra-workout, and post-workout when your body really is just a sponge for those sugars and to be able to recover properly. And it's a really great source of potassium too. So incorporating a little bit of watermelon water when you're on the run or when you're on the bike would be very beneficial. Just make sure you put a little bit of that uh, pink Himalayan sea salt, maybe about um, an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt, depending on how much you sweat. If you sweat a lot, you're probably going to need a little bit more. Um, I can talk about that in a different talk than today. Um, again, Watermelon is also a low oxalate food. So if you maybe have any suspicions that you have joint pain, you have bone pain, you have a lot of lethargy, you have issues with bloating and some gut issues as well, and you're just feeling overall fatigued and malaised, then definitely getting these oxalates checked out and then manipulating your diet so that you're not getting exposed to them as much and also decreasing the stress and making sure you're hydrating properly is going to be really important. Do not supplement with vitamin C supplements if you do have an issue, but getting vitamin C is going to be important. So getting good sources of the green leafy vegetables that are not high in oxalates. So spinach is very high in oxalates, um, but you can have kale, other foods that you can have. You can have blueberries, strawberries are fine. Uh, carrots, you want to limit a little bit too. Uh, and obviously I just said watermelon. Um, so if you suspect that, definitely come and see me. Let's get you tested. And then let's get this out of your diet or fixing your gut or whatever could be the problem. Let's do it. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful Friday. Again, my name is Drew Mulvey. I'm a certified dietitian nutritionist. I am a board certified nutrition specialist. I am a certified leap therapist, which is a specific food sensitivity protocol based off of mediator release testing. I am a precision nutrition level one coach, which is more holistic sports nutrition. I am a certified personal trainer through the National Academy of Sports Medicine, and I will be officially an integrative sports nutritionist in two weeks. So I work with overachieving athletic females to transform their mindsets around food to find their identity and really unleash their athletic potential and life potential as well. And if that sounds like you, you have confusion around food, you know that you're capable of doing more, you feel just tired, you don't know if you're eating enough or if just you're just overall, you, you don't know what exactly is the right course for you. You, you could be doing all the things right, but then you're not seeing the results. Guess what? I would love to speak with you. So be sure to sign up for your icebreaker call today. That is available in my bio. 
All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.